be people will start on tablets. So there are a few complications and few careful tips that we need to observe to be on the safe side and to avoid complications and keep good control of the sugars. At the outset, the main reason for controlling the sugars is to avoid complications. And the main complications we are looking at are four. Eye complications, heart complications, kidney or renal complications and leg complications. So let us first uh, discuss about tablets, the timing of the tablets, the complication associated with the tablets. So there are a few different types of tablets that are there for the control of diabetes. A few of them are very good and safe. They don't cause much serious complications apart from a mild an abdominal bloating or a mild loose stool. But most of the other tablets, they cause one serious complications that is the sugar going low called hypoglycemia. So how to avoid the complication of getting into hypoglycemia? But as diabetics, it is very difficult for any of them to completely avoid. So what should we do? And how should we be able to identify that we are going towards the low sugar or hypoglycemia? Right. So the first thing to avoid hypoglycemia is to take the tablets Usually, most of the diabetic tablets should be taken about 10 to 15 minutes before the breakfast or before the lunch or before the dinner. So, if you take more than 15 minutes before the food time and in between the tablet and the food, if you get engaged in another activity, then you may tend to forget. That would cause this hypoglycemia. So, usually I would say once the food, whichever the breakfast or the lunch or the dinner is ready, not more than 15 minutes. Usually people would say half an hour, but 15 minutes or 10 minutes would be the ideal time to take the tablet and then take the food. If you have forgotten to take the tablet, don't ever take the tablet after the food because it can cause serious complications. The second thing, if by chance you have taken the tablet and forgotten to take in the food, then the best thing is to take the food as soon as possible and before you have realized, then you should realize what the symptoms of hypoglycemia are. Usually the symptoms of hypoglycemia are a sense of something coming on which you, is difficult to define. The heart racing off called the palpitations. Big time sweating and sort of feeling dizzy and weak and everything. If you have reached to this stage where all the complications or all the symptoms have come on, then the best thing is to take a small piece of chocolate or a sweet. But if you find that this is still not come on completely, then you can take a good meal or the eggs, few biscuits or something like that instead of a sweet. Because if you take sweet, then the sugar is going to go high up again after avoiding the hypoglycemia. And the last thing is for the diabetics who are on insulin. It is the same story again because the insulin is usually taken about 10-15 minutes or half an hour before the meal and if you tend to forget the meal then that can cause even more serious hypoglycemia than the tablets. The second thing is what to eat and what not to eat. Usually many of the diabetics have a serious misconception that they should not eat lots of things and they are permitted to eat only a few things once they are diabetics but it is not. I would rather say there are only five things that you could remember like the fingers of your hand. The best advice what we can give to the Indians is no sugar in coffee or tea is the first thing because we tend to have so much coffee or tea with sugar. And the second thing is to avoid direct sweets and chocolates. And there are about three or five fruits which would cause quick increase in blood sugar. So if you can avoid the banana which is the most commonly available the mango and the sapota, all the rest of the fruits, vegetables and all food stuff available has got no huge problems with the sugars. 
and now coming to the exercise part of the diabetics exercise is one of the most important part of control of diabetes because keeping yourself fit and keeping yourself going is the main stay for control of diabetes so i would usually advise for the ones who are sort of the more than 50s or the more than the 60 year olds at least half an hour of brisk walk because if you are sparing a half an hour anyway a small brisk walk would be the best to get out of that time i would rather say if somebody is a diabetic at 30s or 40s you should make it a lifestyle habit to do a bit more than the half an hour at least five times in a week playing a quick active sport going cycling jogging running instead of just making it half an hour quick walk which would possibly be for the elderly group of more than 50s or the 60s and in all the overall lifestyle you should always be active if you can if you are going only up two stairs two floors or three floors take the stairs rather than the lift if you have to park your car about half a kilometer away park your car and walk the distance so instead of trying to do something and take time out of the schedule if you can inculcate the exercise into the working lifestyle that would be even better for better control of diabetes now i will discuss about the complications of insulin and how we can be more safe with your insulin right so many of the uh, diabetics who have been moved on to the insulin after a few years of the tablets initially uh, we would appreciate that there will be a lot of difficulty trying to adjust to the insulin and if you have been prescribed or if you there is a affordability issue and have been prescribed a syringe and the vial then there would be even more difficulty trying to get accustomed to the insulin but the more latest device devices the pen devices are easy to use and then easy to learn as well so but as in india we are still using a lot of syringe and uh, the vial type of insulin let us finish with the insulin and the syringe first so the ideal thing would be to take about a few weeks or a month to learn the best technique and the best way to deal with our insulin and the most common question people ask is can the insulin be outside the fridge or should it be inside the fridge all the time if you are buying a whole month's worth of insulin which could be about three or four vials let all the vials go into the fridge at the top and near to the freezer compartment which would be about four to eight degrees but the one vial which you are using can come off the fridge and still be a viable insulin for about week to 10 days in normal temperatures until you don't keep the vial in a hot sun or directly in the sunlight so the first thing is yes insulin can be kept out of the fridge for about a week to 10 days and can still be used and uh, the second thing is shake the insulin well if you have kept the insulin in the fridge and then if you are not because most of the insulin we use are what we call mixed insulin which has got a bit of short acting for the food you are eating now and a long acting which is for the food you are possibly having about 3 4 hours later so shake the insulin well until the whole thing is mixed and then it appears cloudy keep changing the insulin site because most of us tend to use one side of our thigh and the same spot most of the times which is not good so fix areas on the front of the thigh both sides on the front of the tummy abdomen both sides and some people can take if they are right handed on the left forearm or the left arm as well so it is better to rotate the sides the both uh, front side of both the thighs the lower part of the abdomen and if you are right handed you can use the left forearm or the left arm as well so keep rotating the sides and even in the side don't use the same spot again if the if you have been already injecting in the same side and the same spot most of the times 
and if it has gone a bit hard or dark consult your doctor the next time you visit show them the site and discuss what is the best next option if you can then change the place keep rotating the site once it is hardened and dark then the absorption could be erratic and then it, it can cause a bit of hypoglycemia if you are using the pen then it is even easier to use but still the pen needs to be shaken a bit so that there is good uh, complete mix of all the uh, short acting and the long acting insulin that is there in the pen the pen is easy to carry around and the same thing is applicable for the pen pen if you are buying all the cartridges a month worth of it keep them in the fridge the one that you are using could be out of the fridge for about a week or 10 days and still be viable and the same story for the insulin diabetics who are on insulin hypoglycemia is a serious risk if you tend to forget your uh, food so always carry um, a box of chocolates along with you and uh, the more serious complication for the uh, from the hypoglycemia is for the people who are aged about more than 60 or 70 with other complications and are at home on their own so i would rather say keep any form of contact with any one responsible a relative or a child either in the form of a landline phone or a mobile phone so that you can contact them in case of a hypoglycemia if there are two people at home a wife and husband then i would rather say if you have identified that somebody is going into hypoglycemia before you start to help the other person call someone and let them know that this is what is happening so that somebody can keep an eye on what is happening and call for more help right and if you are the one who is dealing if somebody is still able to swallow and is able to speak then the best thing is to give them a quick sweet or a chocolate to raise the sugars up but if that window has passed and somebody is a bit what we call lying down or comatose then don't attempt to give anything through the mouth because that can lead to another complication in the form of pneumonia so the best thing is to call for help call for an ambulance go to the nearest emergency in the hospital and get specialist help for treatment and the next best thing is to each time you go back to your doctor for a review make a note of all the hypoglycemic episodes the times specifically the dates since the last visit so that the doctor can give you an idea about what is the changes you can do either in the insulin or your food or any other habits that are usually causing this because the hypoglycemia could be because of a vigorous exercise or your change in timing of the food or the way you are taking the insulin or the site where you are taking the insulin so inform the doctor and the doctor will give you the best of advice about what to do we would also want to mention definitely about the smoke alcohol which are very important aspects of the lifestyle and also control of diabetes smoking and diabetes is a very dangerous and a deadly complication which can cause the heart problem the leg problems and the arterial problems and a stroke so there is no bargain about that if you are a diabetic the advice is to quit smoking the next uh, thing is about alcohol so there is no complete contraindication for alcohol in a diabetic but it should all be within limits and i would always suggest alcohol only two days in a week or a maximum three days in a week so that there is a four days off period where of alcohol in the two or three days so the baseline is the lesser the alcohol the better it is you need not come off the alcohol or stop it completely but the lesser the alcohol the better it is an annual checkup 
for all the diabetics with a specialist endocrinologist or a specialist diabetic doctors is an absolute essential. If you are a long term diabetic, the best thing is to get about these three or four tests before you go to the doctor so that you can finish the consultation with an appropriate plan for the next six months or a year. Should get your lipid profile or the cholesterol profile done, should get your renal parameters checked in the form of a serum creatinine, should get your recent long term sugar control in the form of a HbA1c and if necessary a urine test and a full blood count depending on the necessity. I would also say if you are having an annual foot checkup and a eye follow up, if you can finish that before you go to the doctor, a diabetes specialist or an endocrinologist who can look at, his, look at the whole picture holistically and advise you about what is the best thing to do. Until things are under control, the HbA1c or the long term sugar control parameter can be done once in 4 to 6 months and once things are stabilized, you can get it done once in 6 months or a year. Okay. Right now. Okay now.